Hello and welcome to the Coin Republic podcast. My name is Shora Bhattacharya. The the keyword of the day, prediction. Is it actually lucrative enough to pair with crypto industry in general? Well, Totem FI has been in news for a while now, and uh, they're they're getting all the spotlights they deserve. To extend on their story, we have. the dynamic duo of two brothers harry and jolly harshwell and today we're going to keep we're going to discuss about their company and what do they have to offer in the long run so without further ado welcome to the screen harry and jolly harshwell awesome thanks so much for having us it's, it's obviously quite 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 a tough monday as we're we're bounding after a tough tough euro defeat euro defeat here in london but um It's it's a real honor to come come talk to you guys about Totem Fi and some of the cool stuff that we've got going on. So thanks a lot for having us. Yeah, yeah, great to be on and I know we've got a lot of exciting stuff lined up to talk about. So yeah, let's just let's jump in. Um you guys how are you doing? Good. Hey, thanks for I, having us on. I am doing just fine, but I I can see that you guys are both uh working from the same place. Uh you guys are based in London is the company also headquartered in London or uh you guys are going everywhere else? Oh, I think it much like any crypto project uh we we're, we're sort of we've got team members all over the world and it's kind of a decentralized way but yeah a, a core a core group of us are are working in London we've actually got a pretty cool story we've um we just taken over a big abandoned building um and brought a few sort of crypto projects and communities together so it's really really great to get so sort of get that collaborative space in London rooftop bar as well so if you're ever ever in London Kind of swing by for a beer, we'll ch- chat some Ethereum. <laughs> oh <laughs> damn! Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna do a real time interview next time. But I yeah. do wanna, I do wanna. This is so. Uh, I I don't I don't know if I can say that this is really cute because you guys are literal brothers, you know. And you know, h- how was the experience? You know, building an empire as a family. <laughs> Well, empire. We we start small. We start small first. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, but it it will be an empire soon. What we you know the the news is amazing for you guys. We're gonna get to that later, of course. The kind of money that you raise, again, you know, hands off. But what was the experience like? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's a couple of key points. I mean, definitely in the crypto industry, trust and sort of integrity is a huge, a huge pillar. And having someone like your brother to to sort of stand by you as you're going through those difficult patches is is super important. I think the second thing is we're happy to cut through that 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 communication barrier where it's very honest almost too honest at points but I think that definitely helps in a fast moving industry to be able to relay information in real time and get decisions done in the fast moving paced industry crypto is I think that's super important and I think we kind of yin and yang have a very diverse skill set which definitely sort of uh complements each other um even if we don't complement each other <laughs> verbally Harry what's been what's been your experience so far yeah it's been, it's been awesome i mean me uh, you know me and, me and Joel have been working on crypto projects for seven seven or eight years now um obviously in varying degrees and like we've had ver- various projects you know whether that was like when we were first working out how dex is were trying to ape into in sort of the defi summer trying to ape into these tokens and all these various projects and rug pulls we both 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 were part of um and uh you know so so so, so yeah it's just the natural step to take it to a sort of um uh, a more more serious place and you know nothing nothing better than um build, build building the army and build, building the team um and yeah it's just so it's 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 a t- it's a t- t- you know it's a startup isn't it you know like a decentralized yeah. startup so startups are emotionally draining there's no I always I always say to people like there's no like um you know like I work for quite big companies and if you're going your job starts here and your job ends there and you know you you've been set up for success you know every, every day we're fighting to to you know get the code get the order get everything done um to try and get you know the best prediction markets out there so but yeah it's amazing amazing thing with John so totem raised a whopping 777 thousand usd in a strategic funding round after a successful incubation by duckdao the top decentralized crypto incubator in the space how did duckdao's expertise in decentralized fundraising help ensure totem fi's massive launch 
Awesome. Yeah, great question. And I mean, I mean, it's, we, we've been very lucky to be supported by the Ducks. You know, they're, they're, they're one of the first DAOs that have really brought, you know, lot, lots and lots of different people to the space. Um, they've been, yeah, super, super helpful, um, especially on, you know, getting the word out there. And, you know, as we, as we break through 2000 token holders, they've been amazing. Yeah, I think Ken and Lucas, who are the founders of DuckDAO, they've always been super supportive, very, really great guys. And, giving us a lot of like strategic thought and idea throughout the, the process. I think they also kind of given us um, a good network effect, you know, whether that's through the actual um, diverse number of token holders or whether that's uh, crypto projects to work with. So I think there's been like a, a few, a few good synergies there, um, you know, DAOs and, and the sort of next generation of company formation is certainly an interesting thing to get more familiar with. Um, and something that I think that's really propelled the, the project forward in terms of, like Harry said, token holders, network effects, those kind of things that are important for um, picking up a, a successful crypto project. So it's been, it's, it has been really good. Yeah, I mean, what, Ma what Ma challenges Ma did you face? Oh, uh, well, 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 start, you know, this, this is a huge fundraising. Uh, what, what sort of challenges did you face? Uh, in the beginning yeah, i mean i mean the bit the biggest challenge that we faced is that we were only raising seven hundred seventy thousand. we had sort of you know 30 million submitted it back at back in the crazy times of march and actually um doing such a small round um and fitting in so many great 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 people that wanted to be involved it was was challenging um i think that was that was quite a challenge yeah. but obviously, obviously a good challenge to have and you know exciting in really exciting times especially as we sort of bring to market i mean you know, launch pools and Alphabet have been brilliant, brilliant supporters of us over the time. And they're a really, really great sort of group. And I think crypto projects are made great by all the different groups that, you know, really pitch in, bring their contacts, bring their, their reach and their influence to, to the project. Fair enough. See, right off the bat, uh, someone who wants to start with crypto hesitates to predict right away. All right? So why do you think prediction market is the best experience for those beginners yeah i mean um predictions are super hard right in in any like stocks any wet weather football. What, football whatever whatever you want to talk about predictions are tough and then um if you've been in and around the crypto scene for longer than a year to to 10 years you you know sort of how volatile they can actually be um so i think in kind of are oh, what we're trying to do and drive accessibility within prediction markets is make sure people can predict in a safe way. So that's why like our protocol is built for kind of beginners all the way up to sort of experts where you can, can build your prediction skill without trying to risk too much. So I think that's potentially a good spot for, for people. And also, you know, when you're starting to predict, you can kind of see where you were landing compared to um, where you thought it might be. So in 10 days or in 15 days or five days, when you're when you're making those predictions, you're thinking, "Wow, I was actually, you know, way off." I was saying BTC is going to be eighteen k next week, and it stayed at thirty four or whatever it is. You know, All right? Yeah. Specifically, your your service, you guys have a non punitive model, right? I mean, that's that's something great for the beginner. So, could you could you extend on that a little bit more? Yeah, exactly. So. Um, like I was saying, how volatile the crypto markets tend to be is what we didn't want to see is, you know, people losing 20 to 100 percent of their crypto like other protocols in the space, which are very apt for certain quite technical analysts to, to use. Um, but what we wanted to do is actually say, OK, there's all these DeFi users. Prediction markets aren't being taken up that heavily in the, in the DeFi space. What can we do to actually rather than take market share off the existing protocols in the space, which are doing a great job already? Can we target a whole new market segment and say, these are all the active DeFi users that want to stake uh, DeFi tokens. Let's give them an, an additional functionality of having prediction markets on top of that. So we have these fixed prediction pools where you stake for a fixed length and predict the price of an asset at the end of that and then gain um, real returns in terms of the, the BTC and native totem, which I'm sure we'll come on to later. But that's the kind of idea of like, okay, there's all these prediction markets being here. People are trying to drive traffic towards them let's add an additional market segment of like attracting more DeFi users and hopefully eventually bridge into that traditional space where you won't even realize you're on a, you're on a blockchain based prediction, you know, that will be an exciting space to eventually work towards. Yeah, that's, that's dope indeed. I mean, recently you have started uh, beta testing. 
Now, how far is the UI UX experience heading towards? What what, what are you looking at? Is it you know uh, towards the uh, you know expert side or is it more user friendly like for the beginners yeah. and all? Yeah, I mean we're, the the beta testing has been an amazing experience. You know, when when we when we look back sort of ten months and it was all kind of an idea to sort of be 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 at this stage and see like our core fans really like wanting to change and model the app it's one of those moments where like this is actually happening we're going on to mainnet really really soon so um in terms of like the ux ui we want to make it as accessible as possible like really really simple really easy to connect to your metamask really easy to, to use you know not as an intimidating like as some of the, the dark depths of binance or some of those other more advanced sort of trade trading platforms um right. There's also want to be like a lot of elements of like simplicity, you know, bringing all of our branding into it. You know, we're entering the forest stage, uh -huh. so we were in the mountain stage. So you, if you you're, if you've been following our artwork over the next few months and in the next few weeks, days and weeks, right. we're bringing out this forest phase. We're really drawing people into this story um, as we move through the move through the roadmap um, and to to bring these prediction markets to life. So yeah, it's lots. Lot, lots, lots of lots of challenges when you're dealing with the, you know a global team and there's a brand team and a product team and there's an, an engineering team. But you know we really have started to get that synergy where everyone's working together. Hopefully, um, people will start to see that that output come. Yeah, exactly. And the the, the mantra is re reducing friction to prediction. So you know um, that's the goal. You just ask yourself this, that question: Is this making it easier to predict? Yes or no? Is it making a better prediction? Yes or no? And that's how you kind of really nail down those iterations. All right. All right. Totem FI, I think, pays rewards in both in Bitcoin and your native coin, T O T M. How do you pronounce that? Totem, Totem coin. Yeah, right? exactly. So, how does that come about? How you guys are planning to maybe, are you guys planning on the, the native token more or like uh, Bitcoin? Yeah, exactly. So, so there's a combination. So there's there's two sets of rewards within our, our um, prediction protocol. So the first is the staking rewards, and that's when you enter the when you enter any of the prediction pools, you get a sort of a guaranteed APY for the duration of that period that you're actually staked and your tokens are locked in the in the smart contract. Um, the second set of rewards is for your actual prediction results. That's where you place in terms of okay, I predicted. $25,000 and it turned out to be $28,000. So I was like fifth, fifth place. And right. for those prediction rewards, you get a mixture of BTC and Totem. So we're hoping for like um, a pretty decent ROI um, for the prediction pools, but there'll be a split between, I think it's kind of like 30% BTC rewards and 70% oh. Totem rewards. And the reason that we wanted to do that is because you see a lot of high inflation DeFi protocols. And that right. means that, you know, the rewards that you're getting, those native token rewards become can become devalued quite quickly. So what we wanted to do is if 30% of, or whatever your percentage of return is in BTC, then that that, that is actually protected and that value is kind of like, okay, you're definitely getting that. So if you look on stakingrewards.com, a lot of those DeFi protocols, mm. their adjusted real rate of return is very low compared to their staking APY. So you just gotta be careful of those things. All right. Uh, is it one of the most uh, recent competitions you have had in your social media, Twitter, to be particular? You're quite uh, active there, I see. Uh, no, so it's to predict the next crypto country to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender, like, you know, what happened with El Salvador. So yeah. like, I want your prediction. Who do you think is the next big okay. name? So, um, I mean, people, people are saying Panama um peru quite close i mean i you know i was actually looking at some of the asian countries and um you know i've done a lot of work in malaysia where yeah. i've worked with uh, the sec there a lot um help make them videos and stuff and you know they have actually got a very very forward looking look forward looking view on on, on crypto so whether they're actually going to outright make it sort of government right. tender I, d I don't know but I, i'd say they're they're one of they're one of the more progressive progressive parts um progressive governments in, in the right. region i mean it's so exciting to see sort of countries embrace it it's we're, we're about to have a sort of race aren't we you know like we we've, we've gone from if you look at like sort of some of the tech cities people that have really embraced technology early 
they right. really push forward. And, you know, we've seen um, in Switzerland, uh, there's a Swiss Valley, which is, a, I think they call it the Crypto Valley, which is a bit of a, a take on Silicon Valley, but um, for crypto. So, you know, suddenly as we get to see these positive spaces where governments come in and give you like, you know, like what they've done in Crypto Valley is that you've got three years, this is the regulation, Right. Let's let's work together to work it out. And that's just going to be so, so exciting for the DeFi innovation that we want to see because, you know, entrepreneurs, they need sort of regulation to stick to. Like no one wants to live in fear. Of, like, is this right? Is this wrong? And I right. think give it get governments working and it's sort of, you know, lots of people in the space don't even understand what's going on. So I think, you know, how are governments going to understand? So I think governments sort of coming together beginning to understand it and like letting this innovation happen is mm -hmm. one of the most exciting things that I've seen. You know, obviously I've, we've been through various, various sort of uh, bursts of it. And, you know, I think it's quite a good point to mention that our, our totem community has like a sort of a closed community, the totem five warriors, which we are called. And, you know, we've been predicting on loads of stuff and it's amazing seeing those guys come all together and like you know they love it whatever whatever we can predict next hopefully when we have governance people can spin up their own pools but that's mm. that's definitely i don't know what phase is after forest phase yeah i think um further down we have the the governance coming for the pool so yeah, people will be able to um predict remember. whatever that okay predicts predicts what they yeah. what they want to see so that's the kind of what we don't want to dictate too much of what lots of the predictions will be we want to see kind right. of like the community to step in and say like you know these are the parts that are interesting us and i guess in terms of the the country i i'm also sort of looking within the the latin america space i think paraguay's some some rumors and some reports coming that they're bringing some legalization or some some legislation around it so i think it's a super interesting one to watch and it's like as one domino falls, we'll see we'll see a lot more follow. Oh, fingers crossed! But you know, uh, there, <laughs> absolutely. A, what, what where's about, India? Yeah, what about you? Where's India? I mean, well, it, it, there you go. I was about to ask that because they're hot and cold. They're hot and cold. It's, it's banned. It's back on. It's banned. <laughs> yeah. What about China though? <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think the I think the you know I think it's positive. You know, uh, I actually put a tweet about this the other day. You know, like. Um, China has been trying, trying to ban right. Bitcoin since I got into Bitcoin. So for over eight years, they've been trying to ban Bitcoin. And so, you know, I think we're a bit jaded by the press. Like they're still trying to ban Bitcoin. I love the meme where you've got sort of um, <laughs> just to get a, a, a gate in the middle of the field. And it's like, you just can't ban, unless, unless you turn off the internet, it's going to be yeah. very, very hard to ban Bitcoin. What they can do, and they have started to do this time, is like make it hard for the miners. Right. So they've really gone after the miners on the floor where a lot of a, a lot of um, Bitcoin's uh, hash rate is been coming from cheap, cheap, mm -hmm. cheap electricity in China. A lot of it actually renewable. They get a bad rap. Actually, China is very, very pro. The sort of renew you know, there is there is a lot of coal there as well. I'm not saying they're completely blameless, but, you know, Bitcoin really pushes forward innovation in energy. There, there is an incentive to have cheap if you can get good renewable energy going, which is why they're saying um, the volcano in El, El Salvador could start, you know, um, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Right. All right. Well, again, fingers crossed. But, you know, there's another thing that I really wanted to address. And I say, you know, there are a lot of skeptics out there, a lot of people who don't have the knowledge. Right. That's the key word over here. Crypto literacy uh, is booming with the ed tech phenomenon during the lockdown era. So is, is it something that most people can ignore or at this point or they cannot ignore right with the ever-growing changing world of ed tech how do you think people should consume information before practicing predictions yeah so i think i, I there's a couple of things isn't there i think it's really important to follow a diverse range of kind of your key opinion leaders or your information sources. And I think it's, it's, it's also extremely important to make sure that you find ones that actually challenge your belief. Don't stay in your echo chamber where you just, you know, you get that confirmation bias of like, okay, I believe this. And you just read like Bitcoin's going to 500 K Bitcoin's going hundred five, And it's, it's super dangerous to just um, stay in your lane and just build yourself up like that. So really, find a nice diverse range of, of, of information and sources and credible ones that you like. And then also 
the second point to that is apply context on top of everything. Um, think like, why are they tweeting this? Like, what is their what is their angle? You know, because there's no unbiased news source ever. You know, everyone's got a narrative. So it's just like taking that information and thinking about it yourself and actually analyzing it. So I think that's the that's the first point. And then you have to have a belief system, okay? So you have to have your fundamentals of like what you think is good value, where you see it's going. And this is like a subjective point, you know? That's like saying, you know, looking at the internet in 95 and saying, you know, I think this, this is a big thing. It's the same thing as going and being thinking that blockchain is going to be a big thing. You know, you take your new sources, you see what um, key opinion leaders, you see what influence, influence, influential people, you know, you're Elon Musk, et cetera. I know he's got a lot of bad press, but... Right. clearly a smart bloke but lots of people sort of slowly moving to the scene one by one i remember it was just not so long ago that square put 50 million um dollars of bitcoin on its balance sheet and that was like huge news and it's just one after the other one after the other so yeah that would be that would be my advice is like get a good base of diverse information stream apply context and then apply your belief system on top of that yeah, right. and not, not to mention all the information you gather from news blogs blah 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 you can yeah. practice that in prediction before you go trading or mining right that is a exactly. great way to see yeah. it, right? i mean i mean you know I, I, well, it wasn't too long ago that we were on you know the the news sites that were so so bad you know i, th I think the crypto news is is, is come a long way that the, the the fud and the, the sort of some of the fact checking and you know like I th we're still we're still early you know like it's why it's why guys like you are doing such a great to, thing to, you know to be Shout honest with out. you crypto journalism uh, a couple of years ago was a couple of guys and having a youtube channel that's it and now yeah, it's yeah. actually going it's, exactly, exactly yeah. so, and, you know shout out to them they're, you know that I, I i often joke I, I i get less mad as the days go on you know we, right. we used to be considered the super mad when we're telling everyone you know in the early days and you know now suddenly the the mainstream press you know like we're seeing stuff in bloomberg forbes yep. you know you proper 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 sort of main mainstream articles and that will as Joel says that will start start the ball rolling I think I think predictions and especially totem gives you a brilliant way to have like start to learn to predict and you know some people are really good at predicting and they may not even know that but they wouldn't want to risk their sort of their pot and you know right. suddenly if you realize you're getting a few predictions right in a row you're like wow maybe I do actually maybe my as Joel I know Joel's much better at trading than me so maybe his oh. system of prediction will, my, mine's more like I think it's going to the moon. I'm going all in. So don't don't do what I do. Maybe maybe get um more diverse thing. But yeah, yeah. And I guess the the point on that is that it's going to be in such a more easy and accessible interface to use than using these like CFDs or options, derivatives, etc., which are complex financial instruments at the end of the day. And I don't know what the regulation is like in China, but in in, in the UK, India, in in India, it's like. 78 percent of retail accounts lose money on cfd trading you know so it's just helping people not not be in vulnerable positions where okay let's let's try and get them into predictions in a in a safe way right right but your, your platform i think will combine uh staking functionality with prediction markets to create your prediction yeah. pools right how many staking Correct. pools will be uh initially pr present yeah, so we're kicking off with the Fox pool, which is um, focused on Bitcoin. Okay. And then the variations that will come will take sort of direction from the community. But the kind of, I guess the key variables would be like length, um, what asset you're predicting. Um, and then, you know, all the vari variables from there is kind of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's exciting in terms of what you can alter, you know, because you've got your ETHs, your Cardanos, your DOTs. But then we also have sort of promotional pools, maybe with our partners, where it's like, Okay, new crypto projects coming up. So there's 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 obviously infinite infinite things, and then you can kind of move on to the um, non-price related events, so your politics or your your date specific. So it's like when will Bit BTC hit 100k? You know, and then you're predicting like a, a date rather than like Bitcoin will be 10k next week. All right, all right. Let's let's jump into your uh, through native token totem. Right about its growing popularity and utility within and outside your ecosystem. I mean, a twelve thousand percent jump. That that's quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, so the, the utility is what we want it to have is um, it's going to be quite interesting because we're going to be giving away these BTC rewards. 
you're essentially pegging yourself in some ratio to BTC's price. So it's like if to if if Totem was to go down in in value, then um, it means that you've got cheaper access to BTC rewards. Or when we add ETH pools, ETH, etc. So these cryptos will be kind of like a a mixed basket of like will be pegged to them in some sense that people will want to be able to buy Totem so they can enter these staking rewards and and and, and gain access to the BTC. So that's sort of quite interesting in terms of the utility. Um, mm. The second the second point is that people also be getting those guaranteed staking rewards, which is like a steady income, you know, as BTC is ranging between 30 and like 35K. It's one, it's easier to predict because we're just within the Feb highs and lows right now. Um, so if you can build up a bit of a range, it, it can be much easier to predict than if we we're on a bull run, uh, for example, or obviously bear market. And and then and then the third is, I guess, we're going to bring the, the on-chain governance. So we're going to mm. bring like where, what direction the protocol is going to go into, what... what um, prediction pools people want to see open and kind of what the, we focus on building as a as a, a natural prediction market so i guess those are the the three the three main utilities um but we're also bringing kind of um some some pre-ido markets in there so so our mooncaster events um so it's, you're also kind of gaining access to um pre-ido private sales which has been like quite exciting so we've delivered four or five uh, Mooncaster events where we've got sort of private sale allocations and delivered it to our um, community. So yeah, I mean it's it's a, a varying amount of of utility there, and I think we'll just continually look to add utility, listen to the um, community feedback, and sort of keep building stuff that people want to see. Hmm. Fair yeah, enough. and I think I'm, um, you know, like a, you know, a big, a big, a big thing about the utility of the token is like you know we've got like a lot of a lot of big stuff as we move into our road to the main net. Hmm. So, so we're, we're at the stage now, you know, a bit like I was saying in the beta testing, we're on a sort of a, I don't know, let me just check the date. We're on about a two to three week cycle to launch. So when people will finally be able to use their stake, we're going to have like an, this is an exclusive for your show. We're going to have an NFT that is going to be loaded full of tokens. So we're, we're partnered with a company called Charge Particles. Basically, really cool. What happens is, is you you get an NFT, and it will have totem right. tokens within the NFT, and they'll be, re be released over a certain number of time. And you know, as our community, they love to show who's won the predictions. So we're going to give NFTs for like you know whoever does goes in the first sort of Genesis pool or whatever. We're going to maybe come up with a name for it, Genesis pool, and then you'll have like predictor of the week. And so there's there's so much in this ecosystem that's all to come out. But you know. To begin with, it's all going to be about the Bitcoin prediction pool. That's you know that's where it all started. But like long term, much further down the line, as Joel says, there's there's a whole whole ecosystem of utility. Absolutely. Fair enough. Looking forward to it. Looking forward yeah. to it. I, we wish you nothing but the best. You know, uh, I, but lately you have hosted and been a part of uh, competitions and events like the Mooncaster pre-sales events and the Gate IO deposit reward competition. Can you tell us how uh, a competition comes about in your ecosystem and how to uh, compete in it? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess with the Mooncaster specifically, we've been talking to literally tens, fifties of projects of, of who are coming up to the IDO, how we can support them best to run these Mooncaster events. So I guess the benefits around there is that what we're doing is we're bringing a gamified whitelisting solution where people predict the first 24 hours of performance for a crypto project. So when project A is coming to market, it's like, okay, it's listing at 10 cents. Where is it going to land on, on a kind of like moon sheet? So people then predict and say it's going to do a, a 4.5x and be at 45 cent um, 24 hours after launch. And what that does is it means the closest 20 or 30 or however many it depends each on each event will actually gain a, an allocation in that so rather than just having like 400,000 people and bots apply on a an, on a google form you have to predict how it's going to um launch and what what price it's going to be at 24 hours after and then you gain an allocation in it so that's been like quite exciting and that's given um, a way for their community to interact with their token before it's launched and a way for our community to find about new projects and gain a private sale allocation and I think um, the other events, like the gate trading events, are in like close contact. Obviously, we did a dual IDO on gate.io and, and Duckstarter. So gate have been, we've been in obviously close contacts and they've sort of been helping us along the way to, to run specific competitions to drive 
um, volume, to drive token holders, to drive sort of price action, these kind of things where you want to reward the community um, for owning and trading Totem. So they've, they've all been like super successful and, and, and very high take up. So I think on our, um, some of them, you know, we've had inc incredible take up. So yeah, it's been exciting to, to yeah. go through those. I mean, some, someone even built a uh, graffiti, the whole wall in Finland, which was pretty awesome to, uh, made a totem thing. I think, you know, we're building a fun community. We are a fun part of the crypto ecosystem. There's some parts that are very, very serious. They're reinventing you know this and that you know what we're what we're bringing to the market is something really fun something super easy to to engage with and also a, a group of like really passionate crypto people and the what the warriors we're very proud of our community so yeah. you know a key driver in all these competitions to begin with is we're doing they're kind of mvps in many ways they're like mm. sort of off-chain um activities you know they're they're just sort of us explain testing and playing around with 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 the community what 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 does engage with them and what doesn't and you know like yeah the, the guys some of the creative stuff they've come up with but like longer term we want to make it all sort of on chain all completely decentralized and i think that's it's a very exciting space to move to isn't it as, as we start to see that with our first pool which um you know should be coming out in august august maybe all just right. soon like whoa. absolutely yeah yeah absolutely Confirmed. Well, you know, what, what, what's what's next for you guys, though? Like, are you hosting more competitions on your app or uh, social media or yeah, do you so have got, other got, services? Maybe we've got, we got a big competition at the moment for those budding artists to actually make, design an NFT. The winner right. will be you voted by the community. Um, so if you if you if you've got NFT skills, what's the next competition after that is there's a quite big one coming up um what's the bounty or oh yes yeah i mean that's in the work so there's a few competitions we got in our kind of like um road to main net road to main net roadmap so there's a few ones still to be announced but you know we've got some some good things that are going to help the community do some fun things pr promote totem and hopefully get rewarded adequately for doing so so yeah i mean that we're always, we're always trying to think up fun ways to get people engaged and, yeah. and rewarded so the the one we've got at the moment is they're going to make an NFT and we'll, yeah, we'll get it. All right. So how, how, how easy is it to be a part of your community? Because it's, it, it sounds quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's very hard. You have to work extremely hard. You have to, um, yeah, well, no, I'm joking, but you have to, we're, we're, on a, we've got a sort of a telegram group, which is the main, main community. Once you're in the community, you're known as a totem warrior. Right. Um, and then we've got a warrior's den, which is sort of this sort of, um, kind of exclusive level where you need to hold a certain amount of totem and then a mm. sort of bot will let you in that's where mm. all the fun stuff happens and then there's a, a totem warrior elite group um, right yeah i'll leave you to find that out research yourself on how to get there absolutely oh, there you go people need to work hard to go to the top <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was uh, Horsefall Brothers and their amazing interview, exclusive interview with the Coin Absolutely. Republic. Uh, go ahead and check out their Telegram. That's your main social media for now, right? Yeah. They have a Twitter yeah, as well. Sure. Okay, the, the Twitter also, Totem, F-I, I think it's named there. So yeah. uh, you got a, a YouTube channel. Do you, do you have, uh, do you publish videos as well? Of, you know, regular? Uh, we will be in, in, the, in the works, in the works. All right, go ahead. Uh, they're, they're about to launch one of the best things uh, on the pipeline. So uh, be a part <laughs> of their community. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shorabacharya. See you on the next episode.